Hi everyone, welcome. These two trays that you see down here on the floor labeled as ENC1, ENC2. ENC is my abbreviation for European Nightcrawler. And the, um, the two worm bins that you see here, they were both launched on the same day, as you can see with the start dates on them. That day was, at this point, exactly a half a year ago. 182 days old, these two systems, 26 weeks of age. And it's been, uh, it's been 12 days now since we last checked in on these bins. The stuff that I gave them last time was foods that I kind of assume are probably going to be gone for the most part. I gave them cucumber, I gave them some watermelon. We even ran into some leftovers from previous feeding, stuff like cantaloupe rinds, stuff like banana peels, stuff like corn cobs. And we might see some leftovers of some of those things, but who knows? We might come in here and find that they've eaten everything. So after um, 15 feedings over this course of time, what I'm gearing up for is feeding number 16. So I'm gonna put on a glove, we're gonna get these systems up on the bench, we're going to get them fed. So let's get to work. So the stuff that I bought down for them is a variety of vegetables over in this kind of frozen mound of stuff, as well as some pastries, pastries that just didn't really turn out as good as they could have. I've also got some coffee on the side, as well as a couple days worth of coffee filters here, because sometimes we mark where we last fed using a coffee filter. And after, after a while, they, you know, the worms nibble away at the coffee filters. And every now and then I like to swap them out with a replacement. So today, whether or not these used coffee filters, these feeding zone indicators are going to require a replacement or not, I don't know. But even if they don't seem too worn, we'll just use them as bedding in the feeding and give them a nice new replacement coffee filter. So you can see this coffee filter is holding up pretty good. Perhaps a little bit of wear showing on the edges where the worms have started nibbling on it here and there. But it could have certainly held up for another couple uses, but, you know, since we've got a replacement, this will just go in as supplementary bedding with today's feeding. So now what we often like to do is take these leaves that were sort of spread out and scattered across the top as almost like a top coating or covering. This stuff usually goes in as a really nice foundation for the feeding. Because all the, all the beneficial microbes and fungi and stuff that lives in the worm bins alongside the worms is already present and actively living in all of this material here. So it would make for like the ideal bedding to include with the feeding. So I'm going to just brush some of it off to the side and we'll plop it down into the feeding zone as the basis for today's feeding and we got quite a bit of it here so we're gonna have to make ourselves a nice big hole to drop today's food in so the um the feeding they got last time like I mentioned earlier were things that may or may not show leftovers of the 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 watermelon rinds as well as the the cucumbers but you know something like this this old corn cob that thing's probably been in here for months and will continue to remain in the bin for quite a while until the worms can gradually whittle it down to nothing and um, and that's fine but since certain foods like that take a while I usually like to come back in on a regular basis and make sure I'm giving them a variety of stuff that might also consist of slow composting materials as well as stuff that the worms can probably get into a little bit more quickly. So it's um, it's always a constant mix of different types of foods that they're getting. It's like here's a piece of that cantaloupe brine. This stuff had almost been completely stripped clean of all of the, um, the fruit. And still they're working on this little piece of cantaloupe brine. And that too will eventually all break down. It's just that the tougher parts of the material requires a little extra time for the worms to be able to work their way through. In the very beginning, they'll nibble off everything that's really soft and easy to eat. And then over time, as the rest of it softens up and breaks down to the point where the worms can jump on it, it gets gradually consumed in its entirety. As far as finding leftovers of the other stuff that was in here, I don't know. I guess we'll see what we see. 
but maybe that maybe that corn cob maybe that cantaloupe rind here's another piece of cantaloupe rind maybe those are going to be the only leftovers we find in here today so it's a pretty timely feeding i think after 12 days i mean they probably could have just kept on nibbling on some of this bedding that's surrounding the foods cuz the the bedding that you put into your worm bins also just eventually becomes worm food as well. I gotta tell you, the I guess my impression from what I reviewed the video from the last time we checked in here, it seemed like the bedding was much lighter in color. It almost appears to me as if like there's maybe just a whole lot more castings material beginning to pile up down here in the feeding zone, which is pretty cool. Sometimes it seems like the worms are very difficult to see when they're mixed in with a bunch of somewhat fresh bedding materials. But when, they, uh, when the castings begin to really dominate the system, the worms are just so much easier to see against that darker material. And after six months of age, it's not too surprising to see that the system's coming along pretty nicely. I mean, in the past, I might have... Um, considered a worm bin this age to already be really ready for harvest. But like even my last system that I harvested after 351 days, and that's nearly twice the age of this system. So I've been striving to, you know, run my systems a little bit longer if possible, try to maximize the space in the container, but I'm already starting to feel <laughs> like I'm really coming up to the very edge here. And it's because we excavated a pretty good size hole down here to drop today's feeding into but a lot of times it is just the capacity of the system that drives me to uh, to the point where I feel like it's time to harvest and get the worms started on a new batch of material elsewhere and I've been running my bins a little bit more at capacity trying to take better advantage of the space in the systems so yeah, I'm just kind of adapting to a somewhat different style. Trying to run things a little bit more at capacity now. So let's just make sure we leave enough space down here to plop in today's feeding. I'm not quite sure how it's going to go as far as... Um, am I going to be able to chip off part of this here? Hopefully I can. I mean, if I have to, I can grab my little jackknife and dislodge some of this frozen veggie material from the, the pile but some of it might have really frozen to itself to the point where chipping it apart might not even be possible with my bare hands well it seems like it's finally coming apart here you can see a lot of this is the uh, the white carrots those parsnips there's also yellow I mean uh, orange carrots in here. There's celery bits. I think there's some onion in here, some leeks, all kinds of goodies that went into a soup recently. And I feel like we've probably given them about half. So why don't we save the rest for the other system? And then we'll have ourselves a fair split. Let's not forget a couple of these yummy pastries to throw in as well. And then I think what remains is pretty much a a fair distribution of the food that I came down with today for these little guys. So this stuff that I'm sprinkling in here is pulverized eggshell. Because sometimes you want to include some, some sort of a grit, a gritty material that the worms can use to break their foods down in their gizzards. So my grit of choice is pulverized eggshell. And then here I've got a little bit of coffee, a couple days worth of coffee in this little carton here, so I'm going to give them about half, and now I think we've divvied up today's portion pretty good. Now I've also got something similar to what they received last time. Last time I believe it was just pulverized birdseed, and this does include pulverized birdseed as well, but a number of other ingredients too. This is just my kind of worm chow mix. So I figured let's throw a little bit of this in here too for good measure since I've got a whole nice large container of it all set to go. Now we've given them a pretty nice feeding I believe. So now we can begin covering up. We'll just start returning some of this pile that we pulled out of the feeding zone. I'm pretty sure we picked out all the leftover bits of food 
If we bump into a little piece of banana stem or something, that might not be too surprising. But I do believe that they probably have done away with the majority of the stuff that they've been given in previous feedings. Those corn cobs we found, they went back in. Those pieces of cantaloupe brine we found, those all went back in right into the feeding area. So things look pretty good in here. Somehow I remember, I think in the last video when I was breezing through it really quick just to refresh my memory on how things looked in here, I think I had made mention of how things appeared to be possibly a little bit overly damp, but I'm really not getting that impression today. It's true that the, um, the plastic covering, the bubble wrap that was draped out across the top does not really go all the way to the edges, perhaps allowing for a little bit of drying to occur out along the edge. And that might, might have been just the perfect amount of airflow to help get things in here a little bit more crumbly, which is the way I like it. I just get a little bit nervous when things get overly damp in the bins. Things start to get muddy and sticky. But as long as everything seems to break apart and crumble loosely, as it does here, I feel like things are in pretty good shape. Oh, look at that. Here's a little piece of leftover. This apple, I believe this apple was already leftovers last time. And now that I'm uh, refreshing my memory by bumping into a piece of it, now I am remembering that apple had been placed in here a couple feedings ago making that food almost a month old at this point. And that's perfectly normal for apples. If you ever put apples in your worm bin, you should expect it to take quite a while before the worms can actually break this stuff down. It is very resistant to breakdown, but just like everything else, it will eventually go. All right, things look pretty good in here. Let's get them covered up and get the other bin out here and feed them too. Some material here we want to get back down in the bin and now I think we're set to continue it I guess we're gonna have a little worm transplant moving from one bin to the other let's just keep them with this family <laughs> all right onward to the next system all right so here in bin number two I think I don't know why I, I'm trying to remember I usually put those stats down onto my little green board when I go to share information with you guys but I didn't really include it in today's write-up. One of the bins, I believe, has slightly more worms in it, a couple hundred additional worms in it. I think that the system that these worms were taken from was, uh, was left for a while to allow any cocoons left behind by the worms to hatch, and then they were rounded up at some later stage and added to one or the other bin. I just can't recall at this point if it was this system or the other system, but one of them is set up with at least a couple extra hundred worms, from what I recall. But, you know, it's usually very difficult to tell as far as the numbers. So, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll see this system seeming to have possibly a greater number of worms or possibly fewer worms than what we saw in the other system. Let's see what we see. Yeah, I mean, they're both, both, both the same age, been getting managed in very much the same ways. I guess with the exception of one bin receiving uh, a couple extra hundred worms, there's probably not a whole lot of other differences between these two systems. Seems like we're encountering a um, feeding zone indicator here from a previous feeding. And cantaloupe rinds. So yeah, we're definitely um, starting to see similarities already. Let's see what else we bump into down here. Good number of worms hanging out. I thought I saw something here that looked like it might be leftovers of some sort. Don't know what it is. Huh. Might just be bedding clumping together a little bit. Yeah, they've done a number on the uh, cucumbers and can um, watermelon they received last time. I certainly see no signs of it remaining in here. Well, let's open up the hole into which we can drop today's feeding. We might run into a few more leftovers here and there. Here's another piece of cantaloupe brine. Stripped completely clean of any melon. Only a little bit of the tough 
skin left. And uh, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else we bump into along the way here. A whole bunch of worms. Here too, it does seem like the material is darkening in color. Looks a little bit darker to me than it did last time, or at least the way it appeared in the video when I breezed through the video from the last check-in 12 days ago. So it just makes it easier to see the worms. It makes it just for a little bit more of a fun experience. I guess that might be part of the reason I'm always so much more interested in seeing how my older bins are coming along, just because the ability to see the worms is so much easier. So now here was the stem of a banana. They're working it down nicely. But you know, the stem's a little bit tougher than the peel. And it does take them a little bit longer to break through it. A lot of times if you kind of rip it open, you'll find worms actually, just like this little guy here, tunneling down into it. So let's see. Let's open up the hole because we're going to introduce all that nice leafy material that we collected off the top surface back down into the system as the foundation for today's feeding. And then that stuff will really also add to the feeding as well. Because even though technically we're treating it as bedding, uh, I think the worms are going to see it as a, just another food source. Because, you know, leaves, geez, that's really what they generally eat in the wild anyway. They don't get kitchen scraps, they don't get melon, they don't get cucumbers, they don't get all these yummy things that they get here in my wormery in the wild. In the wild, they pretty much eat leaves, right? So, for them, this is just the natural food source that they normally feed on out in the wild. So I think we've laid down a nice foundation onto which we can plop in today's feeding. Let's hope we can fit it all neatly. Looks like the uh, coffee filter has had a chance to freeze to some of this frozen veggie material here. <laughs> I was attempting to prevent that from happening by trying to keep the damp coffee filter away from the frozen foods. Okay, it seems like this stuff has finally thought out to the point where we can dislodge it all from itself and now we got a pretty good feeding in here. Can't tell, is this more than what the other bin got? Possibly a little bit more. But not, not significantly more if it is. I think it's a pretty fair split. So, like we did in the other bin, we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of pulverized eggshell. Which doesn't make it into all my feedings, but I often do try to be pretty regular about giving them grit to accompany their foods. And that's pretty much it for the coffee supply that I bought down here. It was a couple days worth of coffee, onto which we're going to sprinkle a little bit of this worm chow. This thing, this is just a mix of variety of, I don't know, I think I mentioned bird seed earlier, but there's stuff like pancake mix in there. There's neem, neem seed meal. I think there was even the last of the um, cornstarch, I think, was even thrown in there. I had a little bit of that remaining. So let's just also do a quick examination of the outskirts of each of these sides. See how things look out here. Because like I said earlier, I think I did notice a little bit of excess moisture in these systems last time we checked in, but I'm really not getting that sense anymore. So I think things are starting to stabilize here from a moisture perspective. I would think that the worms would really enjoy a, you know, really muddy and gooey, damp system. But I think from a manageability perspective, it's a little bit neater and easier to handle when everything sort of flows readily and is nice and loose and flaky like what we're seeing here. So I don't I don't like to run things too damp in my bins. All right, let's just see how things out here look and we'll be finished. Lots of nice castings piling up. Here and there I definitely feel like a larger, tougher object, some sort of leftover food item, who knows what it is. 
I guess what I'm really kind of probing around for is anything that feels kind of clumpy and sticking together. It's that sort of stuff that I want to sort of dislodge and loosen, possibly blending in some surrounding materials with it just to help it all remain nice and fluid. All right, here and there I'm still bumping into a sort of a, a corn cob bit, I believe that was, and other larger chunks of something, maybe a little piece of pumpkin stem or something. So there are little chunks of odd little bits of food. Here's another banana stem. Oddly enough, it's pretty gooey and damp inside. Not what you would expect, I suppose, right? So even, even though there's like still food bits here and there kind of scattered throughout and even on the top surface, the worms will pretty readily go for it all. They like to come up for the moisture that recirculates beneath the plastic coverings. That's part of the reason I like to put on plastic coverings. But also because it helps prevent the, um, the dry air in the house from sucking the moisture out of the bins too rapidly and making things uncomfortable. Seems to me like a nice damp top surface. Just increases the, the overall space in which the worms can navigate, you know. They can pretty much explore the entire bin this way. All right, everyone, I got a few things I've got to take care of cleaning off here, like some worms off my glove and some castings that were stuck on. And now my nice clean hand has been dirtied too. What was I thinking? <laughs> All right, everyone, we're done here. I'm not gonna keep you around for the cleanup session. That's boring. Before I go though, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now. There we go. <laughs>